Oh. I'll tell you what. Wow, is this fluked? Has he fluked it? Has he fluked it? Well, you can't believe that, can you? Mark Selby's just looked up at the commentary box as if to say, how on earth can that happen? I think it's you who's talked about the snooker gods in the studio the other day, and because Mark's kind of played a couple of bad shots, it's amazing that uh, they don't forget. Five. Well, overscrewed that, but being left-handed as well. He's a good strike on this, though. <laughs> Seven. Well, this fluke, very rarely do you see a fluke go... You see it go along the top cushion, as we saw with John Higgins' his fluke black against uh, Ding Zhongwei earlier on, but to cling to the cushion against the nap as well, that's very, very unusual. This will be a body blow. Ten. Well, when Mark Selby initially took on that speculative 14. cut into the corner pocket, the last thing really on his mind was the possibility of going anywhere near the middle, but he mishit it so badly, pretty thick, I think, that uh, the cue ball careered into that middle pocket. Yeah, but it was the way he missed the snooker and left the free ball as well. For somebody of Mark's class, 19. that's just unheard of. I mean, he, he's, he's too good a player, and that just shows you what nerves can do for you. He made a break of 41 earlier on in this frame and looked to be in control. Played one bad positional shot. 25. But it's been the fluke from O'Sullivan. <coughs> that is now winning the opening frame is a very... Oh. I'll tell you what. Well, if he clears here, this will hurt Judd. It was a great red. He's still got work to do to get from black to yellow. Yeah, and they're always tricky, aren't they, when they're near the pockets. It's difficult to judge sometimes. Just miss the middle pocket. Which he has done, but he needs it sort of needs that to bounce a little bit. He's done well there. He still needs good touch here though from yellow to green. But if he gets this one right, I think it's nine three. Ten. Well, what a frame this has been. O'Sullivan first in with thirty, played for him a poor positional shot. Played safe, or at least he thought he had. Trump potted a plant from long range. And looked to have done all the hard work, only to miss a relatively straightforward black. And now O'Sullivan, courtesy of that great red, with a chance to inflict potentially fatal pain here. Yeah, and the snooker they laid before that was excellent as well, wasn't it? We saw on Hawkeye's view there was just a little bit sticky now, but Judd decided to go across the table off the cushion, and it looks like it's cost him. 9-3, Phil, that is a long way back. I can't see it, really. One good positional shot. Well, hang on, though. No. Hang on, hang on, where's he going? Ooh, touch of side on the white. Oh. Now then. There's no question this table has really sped up. Well, he's come this far. I think he'll take this on. He's got it. That was a pressure pop for O'Sullivan. But the left hand, though, this is incredible how useful the left hand is in this situation. Still hampered, though. The boy didn't he cue that well. If he's straight, well, he's got a nice angle on the blue. It would be nice to get the black back on its spot. Because the red's difficult, but at least to get from red to the black if it was on the spot would be much easier. I couldn't agree with you more, Dennis, but can he get perfect on the red off this black? Can he get perfect on the red? Mm. Well, it's a tough red, this. It's a tough red, but what a frame this could be to, to win. Chance 
now. For a moment there, I thought he'd missed the red. It hit the cushion first, but it still went in. 16. What a turnaround this could be. I always say, Dennis, that the key 18. to any clearance, even when the balls are on the spots, is brown to blue. It's so important on this occasion because he needs a good angle on the blue to get onto the pink that isn't on its spot and slightly awkward. And the angle that he will leave on the pink is crucial because it's not a straightforward pot in the middle. It would be okay just to roll it in, but he's got to get on the black. So this now is the key shot. Got to be absolutely spot on. A little bit straighter on the blue would have been better. He's going to have to, I think, come off the top cushion. So, as you say, crucial, he gets a good angle on the pink. So... Mark Selby now looking at the table thinking there's maybe a little bit of hope. I think when he played that poor safety and Ronnie potted the last red, he thought he'd blown this frame. Thirty. Not one of Ronnie's best. Well, to get nicely on the black, he'd have to take it up into the corner. And it's the corner he's going for. Shot. And what a frame to win. And he's won it. Well, Mark Selby will be kicking himself. What? Missed it. Oh, oh missed it. Lucky. Seventeen. This would be a bit of a body blow if only he were to clear up the frame at his mercy. Well, you've got to say, Mike, it is a possibility now. 23. Meantime, Matthew Stevens has completed a very rapid 5-0 victory over Mark King, the Welshman marching on into the last 16, and now awaits the winner of this match. 30. Yes, no joy for Mark King. A bit of a battering there, I'm afraid. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. What a steal if Ronnie takes this one, hey? Uh, yes, there was one uh, a couple of frames ago, Mike. Um, Forty-six. I remember Seems making like a little comment about it. Oh, well, just shows you how much notice I'm taking. <laughs> well, I said at the time he makes it so effortless. You, you scarcely notice when he changes from right to left Nine. and back again. Mm, thank you for that. Makes you feel better, does it? <laughs> Got me off the hook. <laughs> and there's another one. 
Well, this really is a tremendous deal, and Stuart Petman really will be feeling bad about this. Well, Ronnie looks more focused after the interval. He was a little bit lapsadaisical, in my opinion, than those first four frames, but definitely more focused this side of that interval. 64. But, uh, he was given the opportunity, and he's taken it with both hands. Still needs a black, but I don't expect him to miss this. A 71 clearance. We'll see. One. Well, he won't mind that, Ronnie. He's finished absolutely inch perfect on this blue, and that was a tricky red to control the cue ball, and he couldn't have finished better. So, the first part, the first step, has gone well. And there's plenty of room here to be on the outside red of the two, if he gets on a colour at a nice angle off this red. You fancy him to pinch the frame, and it would be a body blow if he did for Mark Selby. This is the key shot. It's not potting the red, it's getting the angle to get onto the last red. Potting the red shouldn't be a problem. Just finding the angle on a colour. Do that a few times today. I don't know whether he's got a bit of leather hanging away from the tip a little bit that's causing him a problem. In goes the red. Is the angle there? I don't Seven. think it is. On and off the cushion. Can he get close to the red from that angle? No. May play twice across here. May play this really at pace. He's played a kiss the black, and if he gets the kiss, what a shot. Oh! Can he see it? He actually 13. kissed the black, John. Did that? Yeah, he stop didn't him play to kiss the black, did he? He just played to run past it. And I think he can just about get through to this red. I think if it had just run past the black, it'd have been inch perfect. But he just nudged the black. But I think he's enough room for the red. He couldn't do a lot with the cue ball. He knew by potting the red, he was going to leave the black a little bit more difficult. So, still another good shot needed to pot this black. Well, the fact that the greens off its spot helped this shot. What a shot this is, by the way. What a shot. 41. Absolutely top draw. And now, a frame that he never looked like winning. Mark Selby was one pot away from winning it. To level at four each. 23. Well, Ken mentioned in the studio how nice it was to not see centuries every frame because in some ways this has been a lot more exciting. These last three or four frames could have gone either way. All four could have gone to Selby. It looks like only three of the four may be now. 26. Yeah, I always think in this clear, even though the balls are on the spot, this is the key shot from brown to blue. If he gets perfect on the blue, he cannot 30. help but clear up, but he's run too far. He's run too far, so the cue ball's going to have to travel before it comes to rest on the pink. As long as he avoids the enough in the middle, he may have played this a fraction too hard. 35. He may have played this a fraction too hard. This is not over yet. This is tricky. I fancy him potting the pink, but... Not only has he got to pot the pink, it's a tough shot to get position on the black. He's going to have to play with a lot of screw and check side. It's there. It's there. Ronnie Sullivan has made plenty of one. clinching frame winning contributions to pinch frames. This will be up there with the best he's done for some time. Isn't safe yet, especially with this man striking. One. Ronnie at 
attempting to develop two or three of those reds. Eight. Just the one out for the moment. Uh, an opportunity to get more of them in another couple of shots. Nine. Uh, has he got the right angle off the black? And he's come a little low on the black. So, so it's going to take a good shot from here to keep the break going. Lots of left hand side on the cue ball. And he's on this red. 16. Seven. I said it'd take a good shot to keep the break going. And that was a terrific shot. But can he do it again? Because he's finished low on the black again. Can't see him getting on the red this time. He's found the gap. 25. And once again, he's pulled out a shot to keep the break going. Just can't keep this man down, can you? 25. Now, once again, needs to be top side of the 32. block. Well, looks like only the brown can come to save Dave Harrell now. He's worked that cluster of reds so well. This is why the guy is the world champion, why the guy is the world number one. He's a genius. 41. Yes, when he came to the table, there was just a couple of reds out. 48. And look where the green is. It's in a natural 48. place to get the cannon to the brown. 49. Dave Harold will be ruining that loose safety shot he played. Just seemed to rush it with frustration at being out of position. Uh, Ron is just a, a couple of shots ahead here, working out how best to go from yellow to green to give himself an angle to disturb brown and pink. 58. Yes, it's the pink he'd like to hit. <laughs> He's settled for that one. He certainly will, Joe. It should give him his sixth frame in a row to end the session. Just three short of victory for tonight. Wonderful clearance, this. When you saw those reds when he came to the table, you thought, nah, not a chance. And the brown. Uh, rash shot from Dave Harold. I feel has cost him yet another frame. Pure frustration on Dave's part. There's a cue ball going. Should still get this pink. He has done. It's six in a row for the Rocket. Play like this this afternoon. Well, worth seeing again. <laughs> Tremendous shot that. Ronnie O'Sullivan hadn't been to this stage of the tournament for three years. Steve Maguire beat him two years ago and Mark King last year in the opening round, but. He's playing a lot better here this year. 22. 
Well, if he were to finish the match off here and go into the quarterfinals, the second play into the quarters, he will meet the winner of Stephen Hendry or Mark Williams. Now, that could be mouth-watering. Absolutely. Well, their match itself is uh, one to look forward to. And whoever wins, guaranteed 28. a classic pairing. Stephen Hendry struggled, actually, against Dave Howell to win eventually 9-7. Mark Williams is beginning to look better. He had a good win over Gerard Green 9-7. So it'll be interesting to see how those two play in their encounter. Yeah, I suppose on form, you'd perhaps make Williams slight favourite. But, uh, as you say, they both struggle to get through the opening round, so you never know. Could be a close one, that. Hmm, could be. Well, that wasn't a close pot. Ronnie... 36. I was thinking, a little fortunate to see that pink go in, but he's still in amongst them. And, uh, can we can make a uh, match-winning break here with the black out of commission in the middle of the back cushion. He scored very heavily here in this session. As we've mentioned, breaks of 82, 66, 100 in the last. And when these sort of positions have presented themselves, he's made the most of them. Favourite to win this tournament, of course. John Higgins, second favourite. Mm, Ronnie was 2-1 to one yesterday, 2-1. to one, uh, Now he's 7-4. to four. Cut a little bit more, and there's the prop success rate. 87 for Stephen Maguire, that's not high enough. Ronnie at 94 plus. And that's quite high, actually, and that reflects in the scoreline. He just looks so comfortable, doesn't he? He looks in control in the zone. 56. Well, you've just mentioned about the potential of John Higgins being the title winner. With his form, this man does also. Let's not forget that Ding Xun Wei will be seen soon against uh, Matthew Stevens in that last 16 match, and he is the defending champion. But at the moment, the form boys are Ronnie and John Higgins. Yeah, and I mentioned Higgins won the first tournament of the year, the Masters at Wembley. This is the man he beat in the final, and what a classic final it was. 10-9, Higgins winning with a 64 clearance to the black. Tremendous finish, that from John Higgins under pressure. Steve Maguire at the moment, a man under pressure. He knows he won't get another shot now in this match. Flame safe. Well, Stephen has had his chances, hasn't taken them. Oh, look at this, all pinks. Not often you see that, Mike. No, 15 pinks. 77. Well, the colours. 78. Tell me what that total is then. Well, it's 15 less than 147, so <laughs> it's 132. <laughs> Just testing. <laughs> I knew that, I was asking you. No, actually, I didn't. I was just giving myself a bit of time. Whatever. Ronnie, as John Higgins, has been superlative. Yes, he is a joy to watch when he's in top form, no question about it. You can see that by the capacity audience here in York this afternoon. And as usual, he hasn't uh, failed to entertain. 91. Now I guess maybe some of the crowd would be hoping it was closer, so they get to 92. see more of him, but uh, Ronnie in the mood to wrap this up quickly. That match against Hendry or Williams is Thursday afternoon and evening. One not to be missed. No Sullivan staying on the pink. Well, 15 reds, and if this goes in, 15 pinks. You almost feel this should be some sort of prize for this. Do you know, I've never seen that before. I have never seen a player pot 15 reds and 15 pinks in a professional match. I can't recall. No, it's quite a strange thing to happen, really. I mean, at the top of the breakboard, we've got two one four sixes. fair enough. That's one pink taken. But I've never seen a pink taken with every red. Of course, the black, the black cushion was the reason for that. Well, it doesn't matter now, anyway. But it's all over for Stephen Maguire, I'm afraid. Yes, Ronnie O'Sullivan in fine form. Back-to-back -back centuries to complete this match, 100 and 110. So O'Sullivan, three times the UK champion, through safely to the quarterfinals.